Hello Retails, how are you today? My name is Patrick Kamala, I am a tutor and educator for mathematics and physical sciences based in 12. Now, this is a continuation of our previous video of sequence and series. Ne? Yesterday, I want us to perfect this topic. Like we said, it is everything about it is just easy, 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 easy. Okay, so far we have looked at uh, um, quadratic sequences, arithmetic sequences arithmetic series and geometric geometric sequences now i want us to talk about geometric series okay geometric series now um when you have a geometric sequence and then you add the terms what you get is known as what is known as a geometric series i repeat if i have my geometric sequence ne? like this if i have my geometric sequence like uh, this one here okay like if i have for example my first term as a okay and my second term as a times common ratio okay and then my third term as a times common ratio squared okay and so many of them okay now if i add that means t1 plus t2 plus t3 and so on ne? now when i add them what i get is called a geometric series so that brings us to what geometric series and because with the series we are adding up it means we're interested in finding the sum of the terms so now the sum of the terms of a geometric series given by sn equals to a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus so many up to the second last term which is a r power n minus 2 plus a r times n a r time a times r power n minus 1 is our last term ne? so we want this this how we find we want to prove actually the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series now what we're doing now they can examine it anytime please understand it now to remind you we said last time that uh, a geometric sequence the terms have got what a common ratio do you remember that we said how to find a common ratio by finding common ratio equals the previous that is t2 divided by t1 okay or we said you can use what you can use so this is t1 eh? you can use t3 divided by t2 to find what to find the common ratio another you can say a r divided by a you get r or you see or you can say a r squared divided by a r you get the r which is the common ratio so that's that's the all about um, the geometric what the geometric sequence what about the any term of geometric sequence we said any term is what it is t n equals to a r power n minus one okay which is the same as this last term here so any term of a geometric sequence is going by what a r power n minus one okay now if i reverse rather if i multiply this sum this s n means the sum of the first n terms meaning up to here how together now if i multiply through by r the common ratio is going to be r times s n so what is r times a it is r a we all a r then r times a r i get a r squared are we together and then r times a r a r um squared i get what a r cubed are we together and if i multiply let me repeat i'm saying multiply r times a r squared ne? check here guys i'm saying multiply r okay that's common ratio multiplied by a r squared what do i get i get what i get a r cubed that's what you see here okay and then if i multiply common ratio r by a r power n minus 2 what do i get let's check it out if i multiply the common ratio r okay multiplied by a r power n minus 2 what do we know with multiplying of indices we said you keep the bases and you add the exponent so i'm going to have i'm going to have uh this is r power one ne? okay i'm going to have a okay i'm going to have a n times r 
the power 1, right? And then plus n minus 2, okay? So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, eh? so it's going to give me actually a r to the power a. What's 1 minus 2? Minus 1, okay? It's going to be power n minus 1. Okay, so guys, that's how we get after multiplying r times a r power n minus. So we get this a r power n minus 1, okay? And then lastly, if you multiply um, a r, I mean r times a r power n minus 1, you're going to get what? You're going to get a r to the power n. Hope you see it. It has written also. If I multiply r, the common ratio, okay, multiplied by a r power n minus 1, using the same method like you saw above here, I'm going to have, this is going to be a, okay, multiplied by r power 1, right, then plus n minus 1, which gives me what? What's 1 minus 1? I get 0, ne? which gives me a r to the power n. So in other words, if I multiply through by the common ratio, I'm going to have my last term like this. That is a r of the power n. You see it here. Ne? Now look here, guys. Now because I'm looking a formula for the formula of the sum of the terms, it means because I have these two here, you see s n is for the sum of the first n terms. This r s n is the sum of the first n terms, of, but multiplied through by r n. So you can say that um, I can say if this is my equation one, this one here. If this is my equation one, this one. If this is my equation one from here, okay, all the way up to here. This is my equation one, and then minus equation two. Now this is my equation two here, and, and above the blue line. This is my equation two here. Okay, are we together now? So if I subtract equation 1 minus equation 2, I'm going to get Sn minus Rsn, which you see here, right? Sn minus Rsn equals to A minus, now A does not have anything yet to subtract, so it remains A. Now note here, guys, AR minus AR, they cancel. They do what? They cancel out. Because they like terms. Okay. Likewise, a r squared minus a r squared also give me zero, so they cancel out. Okay. Also, a r cubed minus a r cubed also cancels out. Okay. That's so interesting. I continue. Even a r power n minus two power minus a r power n minus 2 cancels out. Those terms cancel out as well. You see? Then, lastly, I have this one a r power n minus 1 cancel this one here now as well. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Then, now I have um, minus, there is nothing, ne? 0 minus a r power n, which is left out now. So, I'm left with what? With this a, r power n okay so this last term last term which 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 has remained that's why i'm going to have here a r power n are we together so this is the a which you see here this first a then minus a r power n which you see here hope we are together now if you if you, if you are um careful this Sn is a common factor, ne? so I can factor it out. I'm left with 1 minus r. What about what is common here? It is a left with 1 minus r power n. Because I'm looking for Sn, I divide by 1 minus common ratio. So I'm going to get my sum of the first n terms as what? As Sn equals to a, open brackets, 1 minus r power n divided by... 1 minus common ratio, so this is the formula which is for finding the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series. Are we together? I think you deserve an example. Don't you think so? 
Okay, so um, our example here, example one says that um, given the series, the series negative 2 plus 6, negative 18, 54, and so on, determine the sum of the nine terms. And then they say, determine the value of n if the sum of the series is what? Is negative 7, 9, 7, 1, 6, 2. Okay, so now because I have my series here, okay, which is uh, negative 2 plus 6 plus negative 18 and so on, let us check the common ratio. If I divide it T2 by T1, that is 6 divided by negative 2, I get negative 3, right? What about if I divide T3 by T2? Negative 18 by 6, I get negative 3, which means that's a common ratio. That's my common ratio R. This is my first term here. And I want to find the sum of the first nine terms. So my formula says Sn equals to A into 1 minus R power N divided by 1 minus R. Okay, so my first term, guys, it is negative 2, which you see here. Then the common ratio is negative 3, which is here now. So I substitute and I get my sum of the first nine terms as negative 9, 8, 4, 2. Hope we are together. Then part B says that uh, determine the value of the value of n if the sum of the series is what? It's negative 7, 9, 7, 1, 6, 2. Now the formula again stands like this. Now, I, they, I have the sum, but I want to find the n, so I'm looking for this n here. Now, the sum is negative 7, 9, 7, 1, 6, 2, you correct it to negative a, our, it was our first term here, into 1 minus common ratio power n divided by 1 minus common ratio, so um, so it gives me 4. If I multiply by 4 this side, I get what I get on here, negative 3,188,648. Equals negative 2 into 1 minus minus 3 power n. Okay, so if I divide it by 2 now, I have one here left with me. Now this is 1 minus this. Now, and note that um, this is the negative of negative 3 power n. If I bring it this side of the equation, it becomes a positive. Ne? This negative disappears. That's left with negative 3 power n. Now this is 1. Now this one minus one million five nine four three two four. I'm gonna get negative one million five nine four two. I mean three two three. Okay. So now um, what do I do here then after that? If I check with my calculator, this number has got prime factors. So as a product of prime factors, it gives me negative 3 to the power 13. You can check it out. And now because I have the same base, negative 3, negative 3, it means my n equals to what? Equals to 13. So it means the sum of the first 13 terms will give me this value here. Hope we are together. That's what we do in that case. Now today, before we summarize, before we finish this topic, I have a summary for you here for this topic. But so far, what we have covered, we have covered um, arithmetic sequence, and then also arithmetic series, and quadratic. Ne? <clears throat> just to remind you guys, just to remind you, what is arithmetic sequence? Anybody who remembers? Now, arithmetic sequence is a one a, a sequence with a common difference. So. T1, T2, T3, T4, up to Tn. Our Tn is A plus N minus, minus 1 times D. Okay. So, arithmetic sequence has got what? A common difference. That's D equals to T2 minus T1. Or you can use T3 minus T2. Or you can use T4 minus T3. Now, the general term of arithmetic sequence given by what? By A plus N minus 1 times D. Are we together? Now, if I add... The terms of an arithmetic sequence, I get what we call as what? Arithmetic series given by A plus A plus D. Now, this, this, this is the first term here. Okay, don't confuse them, guys. I'm adding terms need to get the series. So, this is my first term. This is my second term here. Okay. This is my third term. Okay. And this is the last term here. So if I add these terms like you see the plus plus ne, it, it becomes a arithmetic series. So now the sum of the first n arithmetic terms is given by 
SN equals to N over 2 into 2A plus N minus 1 times G. We saw how to prove it last time. Ne? However, you see this 2A, I can split it. Ne? I can write it as A plus A plus N minus 1 times D. Now, this one is the last term which you see here. So it means that my formula, if I know the last term, then I can simply use my SN equals to N over 2 into A plus the last term because this, this is the last term here. This is the last what last term. So um this is my last term here, ne? last term. That's why I'm putting it here. Okay. So that I can find my SN, some of the first n terms, without talking about common difference. So if a question gives me the first term and the last term, then I can find the sum of the first n terms. Okay, then the general formula is given by t n equals to a plus n minus 1 times d. Now also note something that the sum of the first n terms, I mean, yes, I beg your pardon here, guys. I can find my, my TN again by using this formula here, please, I beg your pardon, guys, sorry about this. Note something that um, if I don't find my TN, my TN, I'm going to use SN minus SN minus 1. What, what does SN represent? Some of the first N terms. For example, if I'm looking for T10, Oh, this is supposed to be T here, not S. If I'm looking for the, the nth term, ne? the tenth term, that is T10. If I'm looking for T10, I'm going to use S10 minus S9, and I'm going to get my T10. It's very vital in some calculations as we are going to see in our examples. Okay. And then uh, from there, um, the geometric se sequence, like we have said that um, it has got T1, T2, T3, T4, to Tn, okay? Our, what's our nth term? It is A R power N minus 1. What about common ratio? You can use T4 divided by T3, T2, T, T2 by T1, or T3 by T2. Né? Now, to get a series, when you add geometric sequence terms, they give you a geometric series. Né? So, our sum is going by what? By a into 1 minus r power n divided by 1 minus r. That's if our common ratio is less than 1. And then you can also have um, a into r power n minus 1. That's our, if our common ratio is bigger than 1, okay? What about our nth term? It's given by what? Nth, nth term equals to a r power n minus 1. And then again, another thing, the same thing happens here. If I'm looking for the nth term again, any time here, I can I still use SN minus SN minus minus one. It's not it's supposed to be TN, okay? So which means I can find my TN in two ways, okay? If I have got the, the the sums of consecutive numbers, I can all I can use TN equals to a r power n minus one. All I can use TN equals to SN minus what? SN minus one. For example, if I'm looking for the eighth term, that is T8. That is T what? That is T8. Okay. Then I'm going to have it as what? As T8 equals to what? Equals to S8 minus S7. Okay. It is also very, very vital in the calculations that we're going to see. Now, also in grade 11, we looked at the quadratic sequence, whose formula is given by what? Tn equals to an squared plus bn plus c. That is t1, t2, t3, and t4. So when n equals to 1, I get my t1 as a plus b plus c. And when n equals to 2, I get my t2 as what? What is 2 squared, guys? It is 4. 4 times a, I get 4a. What about 2 times b? It's going to be 2b. The c remains constant c. Then if my n equals to 3, it's going to be 3 squared, which gives me 9 times a, that's 9a. What about 3 times b? It's going to be 3b. The c remains c as it is. And then if my n equals my n equals to 4, what is 4 squared is 16 times a, 16a. Then plus 4 times b, it's going to be 4b, then plus c. Now, if I subtract t, um, t2 minus t1, I'm going to say 4a minus a, I get 3a. What about 2b minus b? I get 2b. Then the c minus c, the c is cancelled. 
Then if I subtract t3 minus t2, it's going to be 9a minus 4a gives me 5a. And then 3b minus 2b gives me what? Gives me b. Then c minus c, again, the c cancels. If I say t4 minus t3, it's going to be 16a minus 9a, which is 70a. Then 4b minus 3b gives me b. And then again, the c's are going to cancel. Okay? Now, if I happen to subtract um, this 5a plus b minus 3a plus b, 5a minus 3a gives me 2a, then the b's cancel out. Likewise, 70a minus 5a gives me 2a, and again the b's cancel out. Now, not something here that um, with the quadratic sequence, the second difference is constant. This is our first difference, which is d1 here. What about second difference? This is 2a, 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 and so on. So now, this one brings us to a conclusion of how to calculate the any term of quadratic sequence given by 2a equals to d2. Okay, did you hear that? 2a equals to what? To d2. What about our d1? The same as 3a plus b. What about our first term? The same as a plus b plus c. Now listen carefully here. If you're looking for the nth term of the quadratic number pattern, you may use this formula as a shortcut. That means if you want to find tn equals to an squared plus bn plus c, you can say 2a this a twice a equals to d2 d2 you get from here okay after getting after getting a you can get your b using now 3a plus b equals to d1 where yeah, but one will be this value here okay that will be our d1 there so don't forget that uh, this is our d2 here guys this is our d1 this is our d2 here this is d2 Okay, this is D1. Okay, so use this D2 to get A. Then use this D1 to get B. After getting A and B, come and use T1 to get our what? To get our C. The moment you get A, B, and C, then you are already done. Which means you're going to say Tn equals to An squared plus Bn plus C because of the values of A, B, and C. So that was just a summary so far. Now today I want us to finalize this topic by looking at what we call as sigma notation. Sigma notation. Now the sigma notation, it means the sum. It means summation, okay? It means what? Summation. So, um, let us start with sum to infinity before, before that. Sum to infinity of a geometric. Okay, now um, <clears throat> sum to infinity. Consider the following values of S a as n equals to infinity in the following series: two plus four plus six plus eight, and so on up to infinity. Now this is arithmetic because of the common difference. Ne? D equals to two. What about here? 2 plus 0 plus minus 2 plus minus 4 plus minus 6 is also arithmetic because of what? The common difference of negative 2. What about here? 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 and so on up to infinity. Now this one is a common ratio which gives us two, so it's a geometric series, isn't it? With a common ratio of 2 because 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2, what about 16 by 8 is also 2, so it has got a common ratio of 2. What about here, where we have 2 plus negative 4, then plus 8 plus negative 16 plus 32. Now, what's our common ratio here? What is t2 divided by t1 is going to give us negative 2 and so on here. Then lastly, we have 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half. What's our common ratio here, guys? What's 1 over 2? It's a half. That's our common ratio here. Now, both of these are geometric. This three are geometric and this one are arithmetic. Now, note that for number five here, if I find the sum of the first 20 terms, I'm going to find Sn equals to this one, which gives me what? 15,9999, okay? What about the sum of the first 30 terms? It gives me what? 15,9999. What about sum of sum of 40? It gives me 16. What about sum of 80? It gives me 16. In other words, as, as you go to infinity, you come to a certain, a certain constant. And therefore, such a geometric series, it will say it converges and has got to call as a sum to infinity of 16. 
So if you look at our common ratio, it is 1 over 2. Now this 1 over 2 is the common ratio, which is uh, um, compliant with the convergent series. So we must note that for geometric series to converge, it's the condition. Please pay attention here. They are saying that uh, thus only geometric series with a common ratio from negative 1 but less than 1 with of course we add not equal to 0 we have a sum to infinity okay and uh, this is known as a convergent series so a series that converges if r equals to 1 over p whereby p is a natural number meaning it's not 0 not a, then it means we can have um our our limit has p tends to 0 to infinity to give us 0 here ne? so therefore 1 minus r power infinity gives us 1 and therefore we get our formula for sum to infinity as what as s infinity equals to a over 1 minus r the common ratio so if you ask us to calculate the, calculate the sum to infinity we use what we use a divided by 1 minus common ratio okay examples here um, for which values of k will the series converge okay now first of all this is our t1 guys that's our t1 here this is our t1 4 into k minus 2 is our t1 this is our t2 which is 8 into k minus 2 squared this is our t3 which is like this now let us get the common ratio ne? divide t2 by t1 to get what to get 2 into k minus 2 so because we're talking about convergence don't forget the condition must be from negative 1 less than common ratio less than 1 so our common ratio here is what it is 2 into k minus 2 so you put it here and then solve for k by solving this inequality here so i can begin by dividing by two both sides which gives me negative a half less than k minus two less than a half so if i if i edit two both sides now it's going to be negative a half plus two gives me positive one and a half what about here positive two and a half so it means that my seed is going to converge with values of k in this range so that k is not equal to 2 because it will never be what? It, will not, it can't be undefined. Okay. So that's why, that's why I find the value of k. So that the series converges. Then another example here is about getting sum to infinity. They say, use the sum to infinity to write 0, 0,4 recurring as a proper fraction. So we have um, now 0, 0,4 recurring sum as 0, 0,4 plus 0, 0,04 plus 0, 0,004 plus like this okay now if you look at our first two terms we can get a common ratio of what of 0 comma 1 so we can find our sum to infinity by using s infinity equals to a over 1 minus r which gives us 4 over 9 okay so it gives us the proper fraction for such um, a recurring decimal okay now today the most important issue is about um, sigma notation. Now, what is sigma notation? What does it mean? Sigma notation is noted by summation, which means the sum of, like sum from the starting term to the end term. Ne? Here we have the formula of the series, that's the Tn, the general term. In other words, the summation of the Tn terms from P up to R is, is our sigma notation, meaning we want first get our T1. Uh, our T1 is going to be our A how together. What about the number of terms? It's going to be N equals to R minus P plus what? Plus plus 1. Now this is a formula which we are going to use in most of our calculations to look for the number of terms. In the case we have a sigma notation, please note it down that number of terms is going by the upper limit minus lower plus 1. So this one here is the is the low is the is the is the lower and this is the upper of the last term no? that's why i'm saying it's going to be r as you see it is r here minus this p then plus one okay let's look at the example here um example here says that um find the sum the summation of 2n from n equals to 2 3 up to 7 no? so the starting term is 3 
What about n term is 7, okay? So the series becomes um, 30n is 2n. Eh? So when our n equals to 3, it's going to be 2 times 3. Then plus, because that's what summation means, plus 2 times 4, then plus 2 times 5, plus 2 times 6, and then plus 2 times 7, okay? Which gives us what? Which gives us 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 and plus what? Plus 14. So, which gives us 50 here. However, we can use the, we can use a formula. We said if, if you know the last term, okay, and the first term, we can use S n equals to n over 2 into a plus last term, which gives us 50 here. So, now, note that our number of terms is going to be 7 minus 3 plus 1, which gives us what? Which gives us um, 7 minus 3, that is 4. What about 4 plus 1? 5 terms. Ne? Let us count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you see those are 5 terms. Okay, um, another example here. Example 1, it says that... Um, Write the following in sigma notation. Yeah, this is a typical question for most of the tests. They give you something like this. Write it in sigma notation. So we have to identify: is it going to, is it arithmetic or geometric? Now, if you check here, this is two plus five plus fifty, and so on up to this one here. So what is two, 10 minus two? It is eight. What about fifty minus ten? It is forty. So that's not a common difference. Ne? But if you divide ten by two, you get five. What about 50 by 10? You get 5. So, got a common ratio. So, it is a geometric with the first term of 2. So, it means my t is going to be what? My t is going to be um, a, which is 2, then times common ratio, which is 5 power n minus 1. So, it's going to be t n equals to 2 into what? 5 power n minus 1. But they give me the last term was what? The last term was this one here, that is 781250. So I can find the number of terms. Okay. If I substitute here, I'm going to get my number of terms as what? As 9 here. Which I hope you understand it here. After getting the number of terms, I know I'm going to write my, my summation as what? As summation from n equals to 1 up to 9, because these are 9 terms. These are 9. This, this is my, these are 9 terms. That will be upper limit, 9 terms. This now my my n term, which the tn is going to be uh, an, a, inside the sigma notation. That's why it comes here. Okay. Then the beginning from the first term, that is n equals to 1. Okay. Here, up to 9. This this terms which they want, which is, which is now the representation of this series in the sigma notation. So this is the series in what? In the sigma notation. Hope we are together, guys. Okay, that's what they wanted. So you saw that we first identified that it was geometric, and then later we found the nth term, general term. Then we put it in here. Then we look, use the last term to find what to find the number of terms, and then we later, we later do what substitute to get our our sigma notation. And then uh, next here, what do we have? They said determine the following. The summation to infinity of 10 power 2 minus n. What about here? Summation from n equals to 4 up to 18 of 2 minus 5n. Now, um, usually, you first get the first three terms. And then you use them to, to find either the common ratio or the common difference. Now, in this case, my common ratio is what? It is 1 over 10, which is what? Which is 0, 0,1. So here, it was, I wanted to find the common ratio, guys. I'm sorry about this. Not uh, n. Okay, so my common ratio, common ratio is what? It's going to be t2 divided by t1. What's our t2? It is 1 over 10, which gives us what? Which gives us 0, 0,1. Okay. Now that's my common ratio because I'm looking for sum to infinity and my t1 is, my first term is 10. Eh? I'm going to use the formula which says s infinity equals to a1 minus common ratio. So I'm going to have this answer as what? 11,11. That's my sum to infinity after the calculations. Hope we are together. Now this one here, um, if you check it here, my first three terms there are, if I substitute n equals to 4, what is 4 times 5? It is 20. 
what is 2 minus 20? Negative 18. So I proceed with the n equals to 5 to get negative 23, and n equals to 6 to get negative 28. So if I check here, I have a common difference of negative 5. So my upper limit is 18, or about lower, it is 4. I can get my number of terms, like we said, number of terms equals to upper, don't forget, that's upper, minus lower, then plus 1, okay? So the upper here is 18. What's 18 minus 4? It is 14. What about 14 plus 1? It's going to be 15. Eh? So it means I'm talking about 15 terms here. So that's why my n is what? My number of terms is 15 here. So that now I know the common difference. I know the first term, okay? And I know it is arithmetic. So I can find the sum of the first 15 terms using the formula Sn equals to 2a, n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 times d, okay, whereby I can substitute and I get my final answer as what? As 7, negative 7, 9, 5. Hope we are together. So, um, thank you so much for watching, please. This is the part of sequence and series. And uh, if you've understood, please try the following questions. Okay. My name once again is Patrick Kamala. I am a tutor and educator for mathematics and the physical sciences, grade Z, 10 to 12. So these are the questions here. Um, try them out, guys. Try them out. These ones. These ones here. And these, okay. They stop here. Okay, try them out. Then inbox me. Or you can come at Rostake College on 92 Skuman. Or you can call me on 785 for more information. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you again.